Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Marshall Communications webinar series this afternoon. I am Greg Glenn, Account Supervisor, and uh, glad you've joined us for what would be uh, a great uh, webinar today. It's going to be about YouTube for business. So thanks for joining us. So we're letting a few other uh, people trickle in here as we approach the top of the hour, but wanted to uh, certainly let you know uh, we appreciate you tuning in. We've got a great webinar today. It'll focus on YouTube, but I also think it's important to note that, of course, you can apply some of these things to Facebook Live as well. Uh, there'll be certain video tactics that are going to be included that I think are going to be really cool for people. So uh, you're going to want to be able to uh, apply this in a lot of different ways. We'll also have some production tips for you uh, that'll be, I think, really helpful as well. Setting up uh, a camera, things like that, and uh, some perspective uh, on things. All things video today. So glad you're with us. Uh, again, if this is your first time on our Marshall Communications webinar series. Our agency is recognized for our Marshall Plans, which is a customized, comprehensive, strategic marketing and communications plan developed through extensive research and a collaborative process and to achieve measurable results for our clients. And to learn more about the Marshall Plan, visit marshallpr.com. Now, today's webinar, of course, is part of our monthly webinar series uh, that include a lot of marketing and public relations topics. And for this webinar, we're gonna focus on YouTube, as I said, but it'll really be a lot about video and how people can be using video uh, to promote their business or their nonprofit and really educate the consumers out there that you're looking to target and why video is such a powerful medium. So we'll get into that. Um, our webinar series, uh, again, is formatted and designed to be about 30 minutes in length. So you can get some helpful information in a short really period of time and then be able to take immediate action. So we're gonna present for about 20 minutes. Uh, that'll leave about uh, 10 minutes at the end to answer your questions. Feel free to submit those questions using the question and answer feature. Our goal is of course to help you with whatever information or ideas you might have to improve your results. Uh, and it's designed really this course more of a beginner to intermediate level. Uh, there will be some advanced tips in here, but uh, with that, let's get started. So what we're gonna cover in today's webinar is about YouTube, of course, like I talked about, but there's different ways that businesses should really use YouTube. And here are some of those ways that we'll document in this webinar today, which is showing how a product works or is made. And I think that's really important. A lot of companies kind of overlook that. And sometimes we tend to take things for granted when we work in an industry or we work in a company and we've been there so long and we don't realize that sometimes people don't think or, or see what we get to do every day. And oftentimes uh, that's an opportunity to also sell them on your brand and on your product and on your culture as well, uh, which will also lead us into introducing and showcasing employees. A lot a lot of times you've got great employees that either work at your company or your nonprofit and people know those people and think about the network that people have and showcasing those employees. Not only does it allow you to expand your network and tap into their network, but the idea that you're building relationships at the end of the day, whatever you sell or whatever service you provide is based on relationships and it's the relationship with those employees that's so important. Uh, to that end client or customer. So uh, showcasing those friendly people that they're going to be able to engage with is important. Uh, you'd also see this often being used now for uh, people that are running for office. So politics has really tapped into YouTube uh, videos out there that uh, are for candidates that are trying to get their message out there. How many times have we received direct mail uh, during the political season and we say to ourselves, I don't even know what this person's running for. You know, there's just bullet points and you don't know them from a hole in the wall. So uh, YouTube uh, really allows you to be able to get out there. And, uh, you know, I've seen political 
uh, people out there kind of with a video about who they are, what their beliefs are, and that's just so much more than any other candidates are doing. So a lot of candidates are using that as well. You can also focus on YouTube. I think of it too for legislation. If you're trying to pass some type of legislation and you want to showcase why it's so important or what the impact has been, obviously a visual um, platform like YouTube, or like I said before, YouTube or Facebook Live is really a good place to do that. Showcasing your facility or new technology that you might have. Uh, you may have brought in a new a processor that allows you to do things faster. Uh, or there may be a new piece of technology in the computer industry that is really changing the speed of the way the computers work. Or your facility just got an upgrade and you want to show people that you've invested in the community. And it, it shows that you're there for a long time and that you're invested in the, in the facility or the town or the city that you're in. And then also how to make your videos pop, right? Because who wants a video that just sit, sits out on the internet and doesn't do anything or doesn't get anybody to watch it? Uh, that doesn't do anything for anybody. So uh, as we start our presentation, obviously, if you don't know, but there are six out of 10 people prefer to watch videos online rather than surfing channels on that small screen. So if for a lot of people, they're not even using their television screens anymore. If you really think about it, they're streaming um, instead of getting cable. And that is really gonna be a trend we're gonna see. And I've already seen it um, in some of the advertising research that we get access to, that there are companies that are now starting to tap into um, a lot of this advertising you can do on Hulu and YouTube um, and you're able to kind of get over the box um, and, and the box being cable um, and get through there without having to have advertisements running on larger cable uh, providers, which is obviously a lot more cost effective. So, uh, and you can also still geo-target. A lot of people think, okay, well, if I go on YouTube, if I'm an advertiser, then I can't target, you know, just one city in Maine, for example, or I can't just target the New England region, but the truth is you absolutely can. Uh, YouTube is also the second largest search engine in the world next to Google. Um, so if you didn't know that, that's a really cool tidbit. Uh, the other thing is too, it's a lot easier to actually look something up and figure out how to do it if it's a video. So instead of reading an article on Google and then you know comparing it to what you're doing on your computer, you can literally go side by side with a video. They take you through step-by-step -step tutorial, you play it, you take step one, you pause it, and then you do it, and then you do go to step two, and you hit play again, and then you pause when you get through step two. Uh, it's a very easy process, and a lot of uh, companies are starting to leverage this by designing videos that have a 10-step process uh, so that people can actually hit play and pause. The other thing, too, is YouTube offers uh, free web courses. So if you don't think that you're going to be able to do this, the truth of the matter is you can absolutely do this. And there's a lot of, uh, for anybody who's been out there uh, on the internet, you know there's tons of videos about everything. I looked up a video the other day about how to do some uh, audio editing in the program I use called Audacity. And I got the information I was looking for in about uh, 10 minutes of searching and it was perfect. So use it not only for your company or your nonprofit, but use it for yourself to advance uh, what you're trying to do in your career. All right, so tip number one, this is how to showcase how a product works or how it's made. Obviously here in Maine, which is where we're based here at Marshall Communications, everyone thinks of L.L. Bean and their L.L. Bean boots, which by the way, this year again are flying off the shelves. Uh, so no surprise, but uh, creating a video like they did for how the boots are created gives you an idea behind the people that are literally stitching these boots together and how that works so that people understand the quality of the product that they're getting. Uh, that's a really cool thing. So you can check that out um, on the LL Bean Boots video. Uh, you can see the views there. Look at that, 38,000 views on how the boots are made. I wonder how many of those 38,000 people ended up buying the boots. Um, so. But you can also get great analytics too through YouTube. That's probably more of an advanced uh, topic, but I do want to let people know that because that is important. You wonder how many times your video gets watched and what it's actually doing for revenue. 
All right, tip number two, showcase or introduce your employees. So this is a really good example, and we've done this here at Marshall Communications, where we have our employees talk about their story and why they enjoy working at the agency. And that really allows our clients to get to know our uh, employees before they work with them or during the process of while they're working with them, because that is so much different than trying to go and go to a meeting or a sales meeting for the first time you're meeting somebody and you're, you're trying to judge whether or not you're going to like them or you get along or some of the things that they might have in common with you. But if a company, for example, is doing research on our agency and is thinking about working with us, maybe through an RFP process or something like that, they get a chance to actually see videos of the employees versus just pictures and paragraphs. That's a differentiation for us um, over uh, some other agencies. So anything you can do to get ahead in the sales process and allow people to know, like, and trust you and your employees, of course, which is an important piece, that's going to get you that much more far ahead. So, uh, and these videos don't need to be long. A lot of times people hear the word video and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to produce a five to 10 minute video. No, these videos are meant to be short. They're meant to be about two minutes in length so that someone can quickly get an introduction understand, see the person, um, and be able to uh, want to work with them. Tip number three here is to advance legislation or run for office. Like I was saying before, a lot of these city councilors have started to do this. This here is Lynn Copeland uh, down in the city of Saco, uh, which is friendly by nature. By the way, we had a great time working with the folks uh, down in Saco on their rebranding and Emily Roy, who is a terrific communications professional down there in Saco. So wanted to give them a shout out, but this is happening all around the country now. And it's a great platform uh, to be able to get out there as someone running for office. Or like I said, if, if you've got a chance to advance legislation, it can be even at the local level, um, if you need more money for the school budget and you want to showcase that uh, the schools really have uh, a tough time with old computers, for example, well then show people the old computers and show people that, you know, there's kids waiting to try and use a computer because they don't have enough computers in the classroom. Uh, that would be a powerful statement um, to make and video allows you to do that rather than writing an article or an op-ed that you know tells people there's not enough com uh, computers in the classrooms, that's a perfect way to do it. So uh, think about how you can use video again to show what the impact is of uh, either a legislation or um, anything that you're trying to advance really and create advocacy for. All right, tip number four is showing the facility or the new technology like I was talking about. And uh, I found this one, which was actually from the Louisville field hockey facility. And in Louisville, they have a great uh, field hockey program, but they're competing against a lot of other colleges that have great field hockey programs. So what they did is they actually produced a video by the field hockey team that profiled some of their players, like you see here with Katie Walsh, and then it also showcased their facilities. So it showed you the gym, it showed you their turf field, which is very important in field hockey. For those of you who know field hockey, if you have a field turf, which is like grass, um, that's not as good as a turf field, which is uh, artificial turf which then gives you a much more true role. So they were able to showcase that, their scoreboard. I was amazed at the scoreboard that they have in Louisville and they have like a huge screen. It's something you'd see at a football stadium. Uh, but to have that for field hockey is obviously a brand differentiator for them. But I wouldn't have known that. Recruits wouldn't have known that um, if they didn't have this video. Uh, you know, it's how much different is it when you read about something? We have a large scoreboard versus, wow, we're going to show you our large scoreboard. And you go, that is a large scoreboard. Uh, so again, video provides that perspective that a lot of people can't get without one. And then it also gave you personalities too. Again, you want to know the culture of the team that you may be joining. So by having the athletes on there, that again, much like I was talking about with the video with Whitney from Marshall Communications gives you an idea of 
our culture here in the workplace, this gives you an idea of a college where you're going to probably be attending and gives you, uh, again, a feeling that, oh, I might get along well with, with that with that woman or boy, you know, I think she knows a friend that I know. And, and then all of a sudden you've got uh, some real good chemistry going. So I think that was a really good example. So if you don't get a chance to check it out, there's plenty of other videos out there about uh, companies and businesses and colleges, of course, colleges right now, really heavily recruiting students. So you can get a lot of great ideas that way as well. All right, tip number five is gonna be using SEO. So if you don't know what SEO is, it's obviously search engine optimization and it is extremely important and if you're not using it now you definitely need to be and that that means not only just in your copy because a lot of people think about search engine optimization as writing for Google and making sure that when the Google spiders crawl through your website that key terms are obviously sticking out which you want no doubt about that but there's a whole nother world out there which is the world of video. And if you remember, when I talked about YouTube being the number two search engine, if you're writing really good copy in the description of the video, and you're using those keywords that you have already probably used on your website, but you're using them in the description of the video, now you are putting out there, number one on your website, which is great, but you're also now putting it on YouTube, which is the second largest search engine. So if someone goes in, and I'm gonna go back to that last example with the field hockey scoreboard, large field hockey scoreboard college, you know, or college that has the largest field hockey scoreboard, uh, then that's going to pick up on those um, spiders that are coming through it a lot faster and the person who's doing that search, that young woman who's thinking about their next uh, step in their field hockey career at college, is going to see that Louisville result up there at the top of the rankings because they were searching for a school with a large, you know, scoreboard. Or maybe they had heard about schools that have large video scoreboards and they wanted to see some of the examples. So that's a small example, but imagine if you're doing it for a product. I mean, that's perfect. You're able to highlight whether it's a, the L.L. Bean shoe and you can talk about how it's stitched in the heel and then there's an L.L. Bean logo and it says that it's made in Maine right on the heel. All of that is, again, great content. So next time you put up a YouTube video or you write a description for a Facebook Live video post, don't just think of it as, okay, I'm just going to say what I'm going to do or what this video is. So like, this is a video of the Louisville field hockey team and program. That is a missed opportunity. Instead, you really want to go in depth and exactly describe what's in that video because every word matters. And again, Google indexes YouTube videos. So you want to really think about exactly what you're using. Uh, for words. And you can also uh, look up keywords uh, using a keyword tool finder as well to find out maybe some words or terminology that people that are looking for your service uh, can find. All right. So link to your videos from your website and social media platforms. This is uh, an interesting one too, because we get asked this question a lot. Should you have your video directly on Facebook, for example, or should you put it to YouTube first and then put the YouTube link on Facebook? And the answer there is you always want to try to put the video on the platform that you're using. So if it is Facebook, you would want to upload the video to Facebook. If it's YouTube that you have a link for, that's obviously going to be a lot better um, in different platforms that might not have the capability to add video. Um, so that's important to note is linking from the source of the, the video, whether it's YouTube or if it's Facebook, you can actually link to videos on Facebook as well. So making sure you link from your website um, or vice versa across your social media platforms back to your website. If that's maybe where you wanna host the video, um, that's something you can certainly do as well. But always better to have the video on the actual platform. All right, tip number six, make sure your thumbnail is eye-catching. Oh, this is a good one because what happens here is a lot of times you'll have just a video that runs 
and people won't even know what's like going on in the video because they can't see the real um, detail in, in the thumbnail because it's so small. So the idea is, as you'll see here, people are using these thumbnails and they're using text to be able to show you what you're gonna get when you click on this video. So, for example, that first one, top left, how to start your day. Imagine if how to start your day wasn't there and you just saw a picture of one of those um, faces on the screen, or even if you just saw both of them like they are, but you take away the text, there's no reason for me to click on that video. I really don't know what or why I should click on that video other than now I have to read the very small blueprint uh, that's underneath the video, which is even smaller uh, to be able to try and figure out what that's about. And of course it gets cut off. Uh, so that's important to know is using words, the overlay uh, is something you can use on YouTube so that people can figure out what they're about ready to watch. And it also does tie in, we were talking about SEO, you wanna make sure you write a really good title for your video, you should be putting keywords in there of the title uh, so that you can make sure that uh, someone knows how to, to find your video or what they're gonna get when they click on it. All right. So uh, that is really a, an overview of what we've got for some tips for you about YouTube videos, Facebook Live videos, uh, if you're doing any video work. I also wanna mention a few tools that I think have been really helpful. Number one, please make sure you use a tripod. Uh, a lot of people will go out there and they'll just try and shoot with their phone, which this day and age is, is fine. A phone works great, actually. It's pretty good quality. But your quality will be deterred by not having a tripod. So there are things out there. Um, you can actually get a selfie stick. And then a selfie stick will actually have an adapter that will allow you to clip your phone to a tripod. Um, so I think that's a really cool technique to use as well. Um, is to try and get a tripod that allows you to be able to do that. So, uh, and then the other thing I think about is sound quality. A lot of times, if you're not close enough with the camera, you're gonna get this echoing sound and it sounds like the person's not in the same room. And anytime you're taking away quality of audio, it can be distracting for the, the viewer. So make sure you're either close to the subject that you're shooting, especially if they're speaking, that's really important. Uh, and I also think that if you're going to produce a longer format, such as uh, what Louisville did, or obviously what L.L. Bean did with the boots, you really need to have it professionally done. Um, you, you can, uh, if you're just getting started and you wanna produce something, you can do it um, by a cell phone uh, camera or video camera. You can also do it with some of the smaller uh, camcorders now that are very much digital, makes it pretty easy. Uh, but I definitely would recommend if you're going to be doing a, a professional production that you really want to have come out, you should really storyboard it. Um, if you're not familiar with storyboarding, storyboarding is really making sure that you have an idea of what you want to shoot every single scene. So how is it going? How is that you know video about the boots going to start? Is it going to start with an unmade boot? Is it going to start with just the heel? Is it going to start with the finished product? And then you're going to say, okay, let's take a look at how this boot was made. So. And I will say that it usually takes about four times as long as you think it will. Um, video is very technical. There are so many details that go into shooting a video versus just even recording something with audio because every single thing that is on that screen matters. So whether you're shooting your employees and they've got a messy desk and then they have to clean up the desk before you shoot them, uh, or you, you know, are trying to work in an environment and then there's some noise in the background or someone comes in and then they weren't supposed to. So you know, when we produce our podcast here, the PR Maven podcast, or when we produce these webinar series, we actually will put up a a, um, a sign on the front of the door so that no one comes in. I mean, that would be really embarrassing. Other things can happen with video, turning off cell phones, turning off uh, our landline phones. If you work in an office environment, don't forget about that landline phone. I know we don't use them very much anymore, but um, that could be another good production tip because if that thing rings and ruins your shoot um, and it's a good take, there's nothing more frustrating than that. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, you know, invest in a webcam, uh, one of those cameras that just clips right on to the top of your computer or your laptop. Oftentimes the laptop uh, 
computer cameras are not very good. They're not very high quality. And you can get, I actually have a Logitech um, camera that's pretty good. It was about uh, 79 bucks, I want to say, and it really does a nice job. So if you're in the market for that and you want to shoot like Facebook live videos or YouTube videos while you are at your desk, uh, it's a Logitech HD webcam C615 um, is what I have. So if you're interested in um, doing that, that's what that's all about. Um, and then I also wanted to mention, um, of course, with video, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them uh, through our question and answer tab and we'll take those questions. The other thing I think about a lot when I think about video is the experience that you need to have to be able to shoot a video. Oftentimes you'll find that if you try to shoot it yourself, you're gonna end up spending far more time trying to figure it out than if you just hired someone. So think about that too, from a time management perspective. Uh, there's a lot of great um, video production companies out there and they've really become even more popular, I would say over the last 10 years because of the rise of video. And I'm glad that you've tuned into this webinar because video is already the next big thing. So uh, quite honestly, if you're not doing video now, you've got to try to step up the game a little bit because people are using video in so many different ways right now, uh, including Facebook Live and YouTube um, and live streaming. Live streaming is going to be extremely important. Uh, by the way, I will say if you actually, we won't, I found this with our Facebook Live videos. If you post a Facebook Live video, you will probably get at least four times the amount of engagement you would if you put up a pre-produced video or just a photo. So uh, think about that when you are doing your Facebook Live or you're doing your YouTube uh, Live videos. Um, so I think that's a, a good note. Uh, and with that being said, I do wanna remind everyone, we do have a full schedule of our upcoming complimentary webinars at marshallpr.com slash webinars. Again, that's marshallpr.com slash webinars. We also have an archive there of all of our webinars. So if you missed uh, one or two episodes, you wanna, Go back and find one. The one we did on Facebook was really popular. We had uh, at least over 60 people tune in for that one, I think, in total. So uh, you want to make sure you check those out. Um, and then you can also uh, get plenty more content from us. Um, you know, we obviously have the PR Maven podcast, which is great. Nancy and her guests. Uh, that podcast uh, is launched every Tuesday. So uh, if you're looking to get that, you can go to prmaven.com slash podcast. And that's an audio podcast, but uh, I'll tell you, that's going to be one of the next big things too, is obviously podcasts are very popular. They're growing, but one of the next things is going to be video podcasts. So you'll be able to tune in to watch somebody talking with a guest. And as I talked about, even in the beginning of this webinar with programs and uh, streaming platforms like YouTube and Hulu and Netflix, you're going to start to see the rise of a lot of talented broadcasters uh, and channels that will feature this type of customized content. And as Nancy and I like to say, the, the riches is, are in the niches. And those niches means very specific content uh, on the internet because really broadcast news these days is not nearly as, po uh, as powerful as some of the content that people are clamming for. So whether you really like baking cookies, you can find, of course, plenty of uh, YouTube videos about baking cookies uh, on the internet, or you want to subscribe uh, to a different um, you know, channel that might be about sports. You could find something on sports, whatever favorite sport, it could be rugby. You know, there are so many niches out there that I would suggest if you're in a niche type of business to start creating that content uh, because it can be really powerful. And that's essentially what we're doing here uh, at Marshall Communications. We obviously have strength in our uh, core of public relations and marketing, and we're sharing our information with people so they can get it and see the value that we bring to our clients. Um, and it also allows you to get to know us a little bit. So, so on that note, um, I wanted to again remind you that uh, we have these webinars available and the next one coming up will be at the start of the new year. So January 9th, 2019, how about that? We'll be talking about media relations tips for your next pitch. Uh, and it will be a great webinar. We're going to have Meg back for that one. So uh, make sure you tune in. 
Uh, other than that, I want to wrap this one up by letting you know that you can always uh, find more information about Marshall Communications or the Marshall Plan at marshallpr.com. So I want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, all of us here at Marshall Communications wishing you a happy holiday season. And I'm Greg Glenn. We're glad you could tune in. Have a great day, everybody.